Hi and welcome back to PPT with me, Pistol Pete. Today we are in the section of PPT where PPT presents coffees for closers. So this is a section of PPT is where we look mainly about sales, uh, but that does not mean that if you're not in an industry which involves around sales that you switch off at this point. Uh, a lot of what we talk about in this section and around sales is based around motivation, finance, goals, communication, selling yourself. So there's a lot of information in these sections, even though they're gonna be direct, uh, directed towards sales capacity, uh, that you'll be able to take away and use in loads of different um, industries as well. So the question I'm gonna be answering today, this was sent in by Jake over in Australia in Sydney. Uh, he works in a team of door-to-door -door sales. Uh, he represents um, different clients, uh, one of which at the moment he's representing is uh, charity clients. Uh, the question he's asked is, how to get a new person excited about the job? and also how to get them selling independently. Uh, so it's a bit of a two-pronged question. Uh, first off, we're gonna look at the excitement and the question is how to get someone excited about the job. So uh, first off, uh, the role shouldn't be offered to anyone that isn't excited about the job. I work within a similar industry, door-to-door, -door, doing charity at the moment in Wellington, and we don't offer any positions to anyone that isn't excited. So what I'm gonna take the question is, is how to maintain someone's excitement about the job because I'm presuming uh, over in Sydney, uh, whoever's offering someone the position, they are excited by it. Because you have to remember, if someone's applying for a position, if they're not showing that they're excited for it, they're not gonna show they're excited at the door, hence they're not gonna sell. So you don't have to offer a position to every single person. But like I said, I'm gonna take it as gospel that you guys are only offering to positions to people that have sold themselves and shown enthusiasm. So I'm gonna take this question from Jake is how to maintain excitement, obviously, throughout. Uh, but first off, we're gonna tackle actually the other end of the question which is how to get someone selling independently so first off uh, you need to be following the recipe to success so we talked about this in episode one of Pistol Pete's first steps uh, but this is where we focus on work ethic attitude and skill so first off you need to be teaching them the right skills and you do this by two ways one how you train and two how you show so how you show it is a monkey see monkey do uh, they, a new person will take up 200% of your bad habits and only 50% of your good habits. So when it doesn't matter if you're selling at the door, when you're in the office, uh, when you're outside the office, when you're getting organized, how you dress, how you talk, how you act, how you think, all of this is getting absorbed consciously and subconsciously by your new person. So it doesn't matter, and I've talked about this also in episode 10 of Pistol Pete's First Steps that are on the YouTube channel, that you are manager first, and friend second. So if you're a manager, owner, or trainer, and you've got someone that you need to train a new person, uh, you are not their friend. Uh, you are their manager, you are their leader, you are their owner. Your first priority is to be manager first. So you need to make sure you're setting the right example. And this isn't just at work, this is also in the social arena. If you go out and you hang out afterwards, you need to be saying the right things. You do not switch off because they're gonna take that on board, whether consciously, but mainly subconsciously. So you need to make sure you're setting the right example. But secondly, you need to make sure you're training them the right thing. I see a lot of people working in the sales industry myself, that they focus on the wrong information. And also when they train, they get very lazy and they just say, yeah, it's good enough. But your job isn't to make sure they're good enough. Your job is to make them as best as possible, the best salesperson that you can. You're supposed to be making them better than you. Uh, obviously, you're supposed to get them obviously to the maximum potential that they can have. So this means that you need to focus on their skills and train it right from the beginning. So obviously when we talk about communication, it's split into words, tonality, and body language. Now, the words obviously only make up about 10% of communication, but that does not take away its importance. The script that you teach them needs to be bulletproof. And what I mean bulletproof is that that will work, it's got the impulse factors in there, it's getting the job done, and it means that it can be easily replicated so someone else can learn it. There isn't fancy lingo in there or certain skills that are overly complicated. It's a real basic, simple presentation that is gonna get the job done. If you've got a bulletproof presentation, it means once they've learned the words, you know that the best possible words are coming out of their mouth. And that's step one already ticked off. The second area, which is the most important on getting them selling, is body language and tonality. So when you teach them from day one, you need to be teaching them tonality on every single line, every single word, and the right body language on every single line and every single word. 
don't wait weeks, two weeks into it, just get them learning the words and then go back teaching body language and tonality. That is a long winded process and it won't get them up and running quick enough and it means you'll lose the excitement for the job. So what you need to do is from day one, it doesn't matter if it takes you longer, you need to be going through and making sure you're teaching them the right thing from get go because practice does not make perfect, practice makes habit. So you need to make sure they're doing the perfect practice to create obviously the perfect habit. So what you're gonna be doing is going through and body language and tonality, that's how you create sales, that creates the emotion, which is where we sell. The words is the logic, that's where we justify. So after they've done the sign up, especially when we're representing charity organizations like Jakers, you need to make sure they're representing the charity and saying the right things. And when they leave the customer, that they're gonna actually stay on board with the logic. So that's where they justify the words. But the body language tonality, if someone isn't getting up and running selling, it's probably because you're not teaching the right body language and tonality to them. So you need to break that down, obviously depending on what the person needs. They need to be loud, show confidence, they need to be quiet at certain parts to create intrigue. They need to be fast to show sense of urgency. They need to be slow to emphasize. And you need to have high pitch voice on the positives and low pitch voice on the negatives. If these aren't matching up in your presentation and your words, then of course that's where you need to put the hard work in and vice versa with body language. Is it representing, is it copying the tonality and is it emphasizing the tonality and painting the picture? If you've been doing this correctly, then you've got nothing to problem, uh, nothing to worry about when it comes to them selling independently. If you're teaching them the correct thing and showing them the correct thing, they'll just naturally sell themselves. It actually is as simple as that. Direct door-to-door -door sales, I think, is one of the easiest things to do if it's done correctly, if you're training correctly and showing correctly. But that's only one step of the recipe to success, it's the skill. So you've taught them the skill. I'm presuming they've got the hard work because <laughs> obviously you wouldn't obviously take them on board if they hadn't. But the next one is attitude. So they need to have a positive attitude. Now, a positive attitude doesn't just mean they have to be happy, but they have to have enthusiasm, which takes us to the second part of Jake's question, how to maintain someone's enthusiasm and excitement for a job. Uh, first off, once again, that's on you as the leader and the manager. Uh, so are you excited about training this person? I know hands up over four and a half years of doing this job or longer now that I've not been the most enthusiastic every single time. We are variable creatures. But once you realize you're in that spot of responsibility and this could be the next big guy, it, you actually act a lot differently and you get enthusiastic. So be excited that you're training them. When you're training them something that you've trained 100, 200, 300 times, be excited by it. When you're training body language tonality, closing techniques, uh, how to stand, how to talk. It's, you need to have enthusiasm doing this. If you're not enthusiastic, they won't be. Like I said, 200% of your bad habits, 50% of your good. So you need to be enthusiastic that you're training this new person. And when you break it down, training a new person, that's a fucking exciting activity to be doing. You're giving someone the opportunity that someone gave you. So you should have that same responsibility back and be excited by it. It's not a burden, it's excitement. Uh, and secondly, what you wanna to do to maintain the excitement, where do we get excitement from? We get excitement from obviously a new adventure, but normally when we're starting something new or a new experience, a new adventure, we get excited about what we can achieve. If we don't achieve these things, that's when we start losing excitement and enthusiasm. So what you wanna do is break down little goals. You wanna set easy, simple goals for them to achieve in their first day, maybe getting out five or 10 interest parts in a presentation. So just the problem parts of the presentation. And then once they're achieving that 10, what are you doing? You're congratulating them. You're telling them how amazing they are. And you're letting them feel that sense of reward and accomplishment that's gonna get them excited. The next step when you get them doing that, obviously getting some interest and desires out, maybe doing the iPad a couple of times with some customers. And you set these really simple goals. Now don't make them too simple, but you don't wanna make them hard to push them too much as well. Cause you, the whole point of these goals is that they accomplish them. Cause once they accomplish them, they realize they can achieve it. I know when I started this job, I had zero experience and most people don't as well. So when they start in a sales job, what are they thinking? The first thought is, I can't fucking do this. So what you need to be doing is tell them, you fucking can do this. And obviously achieving them and showing them they can. So set those small tasks for the person. Every single day, there's a small task that this person needs to achieve. It keeps them focused and it keeps them excited. And especially when they achieve that goal, they're gonna be so much more excited about the next goal that they can achieve. And that's gonna get their excitement levels and their attitude picking up which if you combine that with training right, you're gonna get the person selling independently. So that's how to answer the question there, how to get someone excited about a job and selling independently. Once again, that isn't just for direct sales or door to door, just charity representation. That can be used across loads of different stuff. Take out of it what you need. Uh, and that's the end of our episode one of Coffees for Closers.